Hey guys and girls, Ayush here from GameMediaLab.com. Welcome to my exciting world of live audio mixing. In today's video, we take a look at one more show that we are doing with Sedata in the acoustic version. Uh, right now, we are in the Gorinska region of Slovenia, uh, northwestern part. Um, it is day two of two. We had one show yesterday and um, the repetition of this uh, show today. Uh, it was a fun, fun gig yesterday. Hopefully it will go smoothly tonight as well. In this video, I want to talk about some of the things that we do with the drums that we have here and how we prevent the spillage of those drums into the audience. Before we go into all of that, make sure that you have subscribed to my channel and um, make sure that you have uh, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the videos that I try posting every week. With all that said and done, let's just jump into the show. Since this is such a wide auditorium, we're basically covering 180 degrees of audience placement. So we have four hangs, the left and right main hang, and then we have the outfills on each side. Plus you can see we have uh, some speakers on boxes on both sides covering the out outfill. Um, what is might maybe interesting is the placement of the subwoofers. We since we have that all that space in front of the stage, we now have them in an end fire array placed at about a 50 degree angle. Uh, and that means that we can sort of steer the subs towards the sides as well. Um, so we are basically creating this shape for the subs and um, that means that the people at the far edges of the audience placement can have some sub information as well. If you're wondering why we have the seats so far away from the stage, um, this is basically probably specific to Slovenia but we have to have at least six meters between the edge of the stage and the first audience member. If it's a sitting show and eight meters, if it's a standing rock and roll show. So that's why we have those markings on the floor, um, just sort of marking out what is the safe distance for the audience to uh, approach the stage. Um, no stage diving in this particular case, but for these acoustic shows, it's not that big of an issue. In terms of monitoring, that's um, one sort of slight hiccup because um, the audience microphones are not working the way I'm used to. So I'm using them more as a, another reverb microphone and I'm riding them really, really hard in the mix, uh, trying to get that audience feel. Um, since the seats are scattered, since it's such a long distance uh, from the audience to the edge of the stage. It's a bit difficult, uh, but we manage. I use a bit more compression to get that sound of the audience into their in ears. And at the end of the day, it's uh, still better than not having gigs at all. I've been getting a few questions from some of my viewers. Uh, why do we have this piece of plexiglass in front of the kick? Um, that's basically trying to keep away the direct hits from the kick and the snare from the drum into the audience. We are not using a drum cage because our drummer feels too isolated. So we decided to put this particular uh, piece of plexiglass 
uh, in front of the in front of the drum just slightly fixed to the uh, drum cage itself and then to the drum rack itself um, and then it is positioned to put this height which actually dampens the snare heads as well uh, because it is at the same height as the snare if you look at it horizontally uh, so that keeps the kick and the snare from spitting into the audience too much when it comes to the cymbals what we tend to do well not on this particular gig because we are at a quite a big auditorium but we place um, some sort of gaff tape um, and sometimes if we really need to dampen it um, we use like tissue paper or toilet paper whatever it is that we have on hand and we stick it to the underside of those cymbals just to dampen them a bit and we use that on both of the overheads um, on one other crash that we have over here and on the China symbol. Now that China symbol is not really an issue most of the times because of the shape of the China symbol. The sound is actually going that way, so away from the audience towards stage left. But still, if we don't want that to be overbearing, we use the same technique. So plexiglass to uh, get rid of the direct hits from the kick and the snare and the dampening system uh, just some gaff tape that is uh, basically we stick it to the underside of the cymbals to dampen those cymbals um, and that prevents them to from hitting the audience directly and we have more control from the PA system itself. We're using underheads not overheads for this particular drum kit and we are using these Rode NT5 microphones which are fixed to the drum rack. Uh, we don't have a separate ride of microphone um, because the right symbol is quite near to that particular um, mic and that distance allows me to sort of control uh, the level of the ride either in the front of house mix or in the in-ears. If I want to have more overheads I raise the microphone. If I want to have more ride, I lower the microphone. Um, just playing with the directivity of the microphone. And uh, that allows me to sort of get the perfect balance. And once I have that, um, that is marked on the stand. And that can be adjusted from uh, gig to gig. If somebody wants to have, if there's a consensus that they, they need more ride or they need more overheads, I can quickly adjust that just by adjusting the height of that overhead um, or rather underhead microphone. Hey guys, this is it for today's show. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a great two days in Shinchur working with Siddhartha again at the acoustic shows. Um, if you like this video, share and subscribe with your friends. And for more delicious content, make sure to visit gamemedialab.com. Uh, until next time, take care, make great shows. Bye.